Hello student, today we are going to discuss about Total Synthesis of Morphine by Marshall D. Gates. So friends, you know that morphine is isolated from the opium poppy, that is it is isolated from a plant which is covered under narcotics. So it it used for the healing of a deep pain, but on the other hand, it have higher addiction, serious lung infections and uh, other respiratory tract infections. So friends, due to this, this uh, drug is banned for the uh, anti-inflammatory properties. So friends, you know that the first investigator or first total synthesis is carried out by Marshall D. Gates in 1952. So there are total 27 linear steps and all are published in this type of journals. Okay. So friends, let's go ahead and see the total synthesis of morphine by Marshall D. Gates. So <coughs> Marshall D. Gates started with this molecule and treated it with the pyridine and benzoyl chloride. So benzoylation of a selective one wage group to OBZ is the first step for the synthesis of our morphine. Then second step is treatment with NNO2. So it will selectively nitrosolate to the alpha position of this beta naphthalene. Okay, uh, naphthol. So friends, once we uh, nitrosolate this compound that is nitroso group is uh, at this alpha position then the next step is reduction of this NO group to NH2 group so this is achieved by simply treating it with the PDC and H2 so H2 PDC catalyzed reduction then very important step is FSL3 oxidation of this amino phenol so as you know that FSL3 is oxidant and it can reduce uh, it can oxidize this OH to carbon, carbon carbon oxygen double bond whereas oxidation of this NH2 is as follows it will convert this NH2 to oxime and the oxime to nitro and then nitro compound will be oxidized to this keto okay so this is how uh, we are going to study the morphine synthesis then nextly the aromatization using SO2 and we get these two types of OH group also to each other then next step is williamson ether synthesis i will say simply the methylation of this phenolic oh groups with the help of keto co3 and dms that is a dimethyl sulfate as you know the dms is used for the methylation these two phenolic groups are methylated to ome and ome our benzoyl ester is always there which we uh, prepared in the first step then this benzoyl ester was hydrolyzed with the help of NaCSO3 in presence of KOH. As it hydrolyzes, it will uh, leave us this phenolic OH and it will be reprotected. So friends, next step again, the repetition of the previous steps. Then treatment of NaNO2 will uh, enter the NO group that is nitroso group at alpha position of this OH group that is another OH group and then reduction of this NO group to NH2 with the help of H2PDC and then oxidation using FeCl3 to this diacuta compound. So friends once we get this compound now the reactions are a bit different as previously we got this compound over here but now the reactions are a bit different now we have two methoxy group over here and now we are going to treat it with the ethyl cyanoacetate okay so ethyl cyanoacetate is used for the next reaction and next reaction is nothing but 1,4 Michael addition reaction so this is a 1,4 uh, this is alpha beta unsaturated ketone and this ethyl cyanoacetate will get the carbonyl and this carbonyl will attack over the beta position or 4 position and then we get one for Michael addition and this product is formed. Now you can see here there are CO2 ET and CN over here. 
So if we hydrolyze the cistern and then decarboxylation will uh, remove this COAT from our molecule uh, after the hydrolysis and decarboxylation. So KOH will convert the cistern to COH and then uh, heating will convert this group uh, or decarbonate this group. So we get CH, CH to CN over here. So friends, let's go for the next steps. Next step is very important and uh, it is also discussed in uh, papers by the uh, Marshall indicates. So friends, this is a reaction which is very well known. That is a diacylinder reaction between this uh, our compound and 1,3-butadiene. So what is the structure of 1,3-butadiene? It's very simple. It is like this. Okay. Now there will be diacylinder reaction and then we get this kind of unsaturated ring system. So friends, if we get uh, this kind of unsaturated ring system, so it's over here, we get this kind of unsaturated ring system because the reaction with 1,3-butadiene will be over here. Okay. So this is the reaction and we get this kind of this kind of uh, unsaturated six-membered ring system. Okay. So once we get the uh, this six-membered ring, the next step is very very important and this step is nothing but reaction of this uh, copper chromate and H2. So let's see what is this reaction and how it is helping us. So this reaction is uh, mentioned over here. You can see here, now we reach up to here and now we are using copper chromate. Now this copper chromate will first reduce this double bond. Okay, it will reduce the double bond. We get OH and this H over here as the double bond is reduced. Then next step or mechanism is reduction or attack of this OH group over this you can say uh, carbon of uh, nitrile. So it will attack over here and we get imine uh, derivative. Okay, so oxygen and then double bond NH. Now it will break, it will form a radical and you will get the alpha radical over here and this oxygen which was uh, as present as OH will attach to this carbon. Now we get O radical double bond NH and this will uh, I will say this will delocalize over here on the nitrogen and then NH radical and this carbon radical will combine together to form NHCOCH2 ring. Okay, So this is a very key step in the morphine synthesis. You must remember this. So once we get this cyclization using copper chromite and H2, we will go further. So the next reaction is so the next reaction is so next reaction is uh, you can see here we got this compound by treatment of copper chromate and H2. The next reaction is Wolf Krishna reduction that is using NH2 and H2. We will completely reduce this keto compound. Okay, keto, not the amide. Okay, so this keto will reduce to CH2 in presence of NH2, NH2 and KOH. The next steps are methylation using sodium hydride and methyl hydride. Okay, methylation using sodium hydride and methyl hydride. So, of course, the NH is the only source for the methylation and we get NH methylation using sodium hydride and methyl hydride. Next step is reduction using LiAlH4 that is lithium aluminum hydride. You can see here NH2, NH2, KOH will not able to reduce this amide keto but LH will definitely reduce this amide carbonyl group. Okay, So, amide carbonyl group is reduced using LiAlH4. So, we get this kind of ring system over here or intermediate. So friends, in this same reaction, the enantiomer will resolve <coughs> and we get 72% yield of that enantiomers. Okay, you can see here there is nitrogen on the uh, nitrogen is shown by thick bond and the 
hydrogen with the dotted so friends next step is simple addition of water molecule this to this double bond that is this is a electron rich double bond will definitely add up uh, water will be definitely add up to this double bond if we use h 2 so for and h 2 so we get addition of water molecule to this double bond and again then koh and nh2 is used for the demethylation of this ome so we get oh over here now we have uh, phenolic oh and this uh, alcoholic oh over here so when we uh, did do the treatment uh, with the potassium tertiary butoxide and uh, benzophenone it will help us uh, for the opener oxidation and opener oxidation will convert this alcoholic oh to this keto group okay so this keto is very helpful for two things first it is uh, will help us for the formation of this uh, hydrazone derivative so uh, reaction with br2 and 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrogen that is 2,4 dnp will convert this keto into hydrazone but on the other hand this br2 will brominate our aromatic ring so we get this kind of uh, intermediate so why this is important it is important for the resolution because you can see here is a nitrogen on the thick side or denoted by the uh, thick bond and uh, dotted by hydrogen so in this after this reaction we get the isomerization of this hydrogen and this hydrogen will come over here now it's time to remove this to for uh, dnp or hydrogen derivative simply hydrolysis with scl will remove this uh, hydrogen part and we again get the keto back to our molecule friends the next step is very important of course this uh, synthesis is ca carried out in 1952 so there are uh, multiple step which might be uh, seen irrelevant in this uh, today's era so the next step is treatment with the uh, p2o2 that is uh, platinum oxide in presence of h2 so it will uh, definitely debrominate this compound okay so many of you know that h2 pdc or platinum uh, oxide and h2 will help us for the dehalogenation from this aromatic ring so it will dehalogenate this bromine and we get hydrogen over here so next step is again uh, bromine in sodium acetate and 2 pro dnp so this is very important step because we get bromine over here bromine over here and again bromine over here okay excess bromine so this tri bromo compound is then uh, have many reactions like if we treat it with the acetic acid bromine will leave but this oxygen will attack over here and this bromine will leave then this is hbr removal from here we get double bond over here and then aromatic bromine okay so uh, we get bromo over here double bond over here and then cyclization okay so this is the key step from the morphine synthesis so once we get this uh, type of intermediate again we will remove this hydrogen derivative or hydrogen part by using scl hydrolysis so once we get scl hydrolysis then we get keto over here then reduction final two step are reduction using li alh4 so this step uh, is helpful in two ways it will dehalogenate our bromo or debromination as well as it will reduce our keto group from this part okay so debromination and reduction of keto to alcohol is achieved by LA, li alh4 and the last step is <coughs> very important that is conversion of this ome to oh this is achieved by many reagent but the good yield almost 34 percent is achieved by pyridine uh, hydrochloride okay pyridinium hydrochloride at 22 220 degree gave us 32 percent of our final product that is morphine so friends this is all about morphine synthesis if you guys have any problem in any reaction, please feel free to ask me.
थैंक यू वेरी मच